Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Here we are again. It is Monday, April the 19th, 2021, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 93, and I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Constance, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about y'all? This week, uh, it is Art History Week time, our art biography, and I came across Across an excellent video about the American artist Bob Raw. So, for our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, boy, I missed that up. <laughs> www.talkartpodcast.com, talkartpodcast.com, you'll see some very informative videos about Bob Ross, just in case you don't know who he is. And I think a large number of our listeners that are non-artists know who Bob Ross is. But in case you don't, take a look at those videos. And there was an excellent uh, tribute video that was done by uh, PP- PBS, told more more detail of his life. And there's some short, uh, informative uh, things you didn't know about Bob Ross. So, Diane, do you know who Bob Ross is? <laughs> I know who he is. I've heard of him and stuff. And I know he has art supplies in the you know stores and things like that. But I had never watched one of his <laughs> shows. Uh, I guess it was the timing of when they were on. It's like when my kids, you know, I had just gotten out. It was a couple of years, I guess, after I had graduated college, and I was had my kids, and you know, I was busy with family stuff, and I never really watched TV much anyway. But um, yeah, I missed all of his shows. <laughs> I never saw any of them. Well, you can catch up because they're all over YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask your PBS station to air them, and they will. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Get- they, they probably are on there. I just don't watch TV much, so I don't see well, it. Now, Constance, I know you, yeah. you know about Bob Ross. Yeah, I do. I do. I've painted some of his paintings before and bought, bought his supplies. And he does have, it's it's neat to watch him paint because, I mean, if you wanted to know how to paint something, if you're an artist and you don't know how to paint that certain thing, it has to do with landscapes. I mean, it's, it's you know, he, he can paint a tree in a couple of seconds, you know. Uh, if you want trees to paint, be painted. None of, I've never lived anywhere where they had trees like that. Uh, so, but still. You know, it's he has a lot of good techniques to pick up on. Yeah, I 
I knew who he was, and I had I had only watched a few of his videos. At the high point of his career, I was serving in the Navy, and I was overseas. And now the Armed Forces Television Network, they would occasionally show a Bob Ross video. And so I would, yeah, I would watch it then. And uh, even when I was in the Persian Gulf on a ship, they showed come up some of his videos. And it was so interesting. Here we are, all of us, you know, rough and tumble sailors in the break room. We're all sitting around about 15. <laughs> I mean, it was incredible. <laughs> How can he do that? You know, and, he's very charismatic, you know, as when, you know, to watch because he just, you know, like they said on that video, he, he just makes it look like magic, you know, and it does look like magic when he does it, you know, it's, he just makes it happen, you know, and it's like yeah, a happy little tree. He lives here or there or whatever. Yeah. But, <laughs> I think part of his popularity was because when he came, when he, when he came out, there wasn't a lot of stuff. I don't even know if the internet was really doing anything much at that point. So it was um, the first really introduction I think a lot of people had of watching an, a painter paint. And he had a really calming um, nature about him and soft spoken and stuff. So I guess a lot of people enjoyed that. PBS was the, you know, the, the uh, you know promoter, and he all the shows were you know on PBS. And like the video is saying, there's been a resurgence and a renewal of interest in Bob Ross because of the internet. Because now all this stuff is also on the internet. The PBS, mm -hmm. they still show his series. What he did up to, he called the, up to, uh, was it? He did up to 31 series. 31 series. 31 series, which is 13 paintings in each series. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then he painted three paintings that were alike for the shows that was really interesting i had no idea that he did that yeah. you know he had the one that he was going to use from then the one he painted on the show and i forget what the third one was for but anyway he had three of and each painting that he did like they said in the video too, uh people ask where can you buy a bob ross painting you can't i did not know that you cannot you know, yeah i thought that was pretty interesting that he didn't make any money at all from the at the sale of any of his work <laughs> that's pretty crazy the uh yeah the, the instruction seminars and his the paint supplies that's mm -hmm. where his income came from you know that's where he you know got rich but his actual paintings he never sold any of his paintings i got a kick out he showed a little clip when he was on with phil donahue and phil donahue was saying bob you know none of your paintings will be hanging in a museum and then they, <laughs> they are now then they click to the Smithsonian Institute has a Bob Ross collection. I just, that is just. And that's the only people they have ever released any paintings from the pile, piles of paintings that he did. That's the only ones that were ever available to anywhere. And that's, you know, they only gave them to the Smithsonian. Right. I, I looked it up on the, on the internet. It was in uh, 2019 when the Smithsonian announced that they were going to purchase, start out with three, you know, three paintings, but they weren't going to hold a public ex exhibition, which depressed a lot of people. Well, then in 2020, they held a public exhibition, but they held it combined with, they had a local instructor come to, if you signed up to see the exhibition, you had to also sign up for the class, you know? So, and the money was donated to the, to the Smithsonian. So that's how, you know, they raise money, and in fact, all of his, all of his stuff was all related to, with, as far as his artwork was, was related to raising money because they said that he uh, would, of those three paintings, he would donate one of them to a PBS station that aired his show, for them to auction off for people to give donations to the station. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I forgot about mm -hmm. that. That was the only way you could ever get a Bob Ross painting. You can't buy one. But how cool was that? I mean, you know, you know. So, and I, he, he was, he was uh, hardcore about getting people to paint, teaching people how to paint. So anybody can learn how to paint. That was his whole purpose in life. And I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, the guy could have, he could have been making millions of dollars from his paintings, from selling prints and whatnot. No, none of that. You can't. 
you know, <laughs> all he was interested in was selling his instruction courses, you know, teaching other instructors, you know, to, and to going around the country and, uh, you know, uh, holding painting seminars and selling his art supplies, you know, his company, you know, manufacturing, which his company still exists today. I didn't know these things about Bob Ross. I really didn't until I went after watching these videos, you know, and everything. It just it, it tickled me about how they made the book, you know, because I have one of his books. I think I have two, but I'm not sure. And I did three paintings that I know of, of out of his books. And I think I even have a video that, you know, or a DVD. And uh, two of them were beach scenes and one was a mountain scene. And Will has the mountain scene. He's not going to let me have that back. But the other two are beach scenes. And I have them up for sale on Facebook, you know, but they were it's it was really cool all the little tricks he teaches you how to make those waves really look great, you know. So, yeah. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do a Bob Ross tribute painting. Put my hand. Make some happy trees. <laughs> yeah, paint some happy trees. I did. <laughs> I think everybody should try painting some of his paintings. <laughs> his buddy Fred and <laughs> I mean, that's why I like that 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 one. Uh, Peapod. Uh, yeah, criti yeah, yeah. And then he's his love. Peapod, Peapod the pocket squirrel. <laughs> his his love for for rescuing animals. You know, he uh, he funded that. And, you know, and he was big big on that from the time he was a young boy. But then the shocking information, and we were talking about this constant before we started the recording. The most shocking thing was he had spent 20 years in the Air Force, which I didn't know, and he was a hard case. Sergeant. Sergeant. Real sergeant. I mean. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, you, when you look at him and listen to him in those videos, it is hard to wrap your mind around the fact that he was a sergeant in the, in the Air Force. Yep. You know, because he said, you know, and they said, he said that once he got out of the service, and he, would, he didn't want to talk harsh and mean like that anymore he just wanted to talk with a nice soft voice you know because he was tired of that's where having he, to do that to people he was stationed in alaska so that's where he got all of his inspiration for all of his painting mm -hmm. all those beautiful mountains up there they are pretty so all of his i've seen the rockies so i know they're pretty and i've seen them with snow on them and stuff when i used to drive a truck but um majority of his paintings especially the mountain scenes and lakes and trees are all from memory of his his memories of living in alaska all those years mm -hmm. yeah. alaska for most of the time when he was in the service that, yeah. alaska's on my bucket list <laughs> <laughs> alaska and going down the grand canyon on a mule that's on my bucket list <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that going down the Grand Canyon on a mule. I, oh, I love mules. I would love to ride a mule down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and ride it back up. They have. Yeah, I'd like to do that too. They have. Um, I'm so brave. <laughs> they have actual uh, trips that you can go on to do that. You know, mm -hmm. there's people that make, uh, I guess, their packages, package vacation package or something. Yeah, I've actually looked it up and they do. I would love to do that. Not me. Nope. <laughs> well, you know, different folks. <laughs> yeah. Not one of my, you know, uh, when I, hey, when I was younger, you know, I had ideals that I was going to do things. Like when I was in the Navy, a, uh, a friend of mine, uh, we were out, out in California going through technical, technical school. Uh, they had a, uh, an instructor who would teach us uh, scuba diving was a real big thing. Of course, you know, being out there in San Diego, you know, in the mm -hmm. and boy, we got all enthused and yeah, we're going to take this scuba diving course. And for Navy personnel, since he was a, you know, Navy personnel, it only cost us like $20 for like a, Oh geez. Or we, wow. It's more expensive if you're a real person, you know, if yeah. <laughs> Cause I've done it, you know, <laughs> like in 1978, 1980, you know, so anyhow, boy, I'm out there. I'm all enthused, and we're excited. And, of course, you had to spend the first two or three days uh, in the pool to, mm -hmm. how to, you know, put your gear on and everything. And so, you know, he sat. well, you sat in the classroom for like uh, a half. He did. Then you went to the pool. Okay. Right. So, you know, we're learning everything. And then he had us put this weight belt on and jump in at the 10-foot deep end. 
And so I did that. And of course I went straight down, <laughs> belt off. And I, next thing you know, I am running out of air and I'm motioning and everything. And he had to come down and take the belt off so I could come back up. <laughs> My buddy was like, Clyde, what? You know, I said, oh man. So then we were, went to, we was out to the <laughs> club and we were drinking that night. I said, I'm dropping out. What? I said, no, I can't do this. I said, not for you. I can't get in the pool. What would I do out in the ocean? <laughs> yeah, I I learned to to do that too. And I, one time I tried to, I was coming up too fast, and the instructor grabbed my arm and said, "Because you can't talk." <laughs> so he just looked at it. I was going. <laughs> so he made me, you know, come up slower. You're not. You're supposed to follow your bubbles up yeah, and so not come up faster. So don't get the bends. Bubbles. Yeah. So anyhow, that's the that's the end of my uh, scuba diving days. Well, then. <laughs> later <laughs> skydiving oh no <laughs> never i would never do that uh-uh you couldn't get me to jump out of a plane to say uh-uh i just have to die <laughs> somebody would have to carry me out of the door because i would never jump on my own young in the navy well i had ideals to do all kinds of things but no 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 i think people who bungee jump are crazy <laughs> what happens if it breaks <laughs> he voluntarily jumped off a bridge. <laughs> uh uh-uh. <laughs> Crazy people. My listeners are probably saying, what has this got to do with Bob Ross? No, no. <laughs> well, he was, in, he was in the service. Bob Ross will get all of those crazy ideas out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calm. He will make you want to paint happy trees and happy, serene landscapes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I never wanted to paint like Bob Ross, but I did enjoy what few videos I watched. And occasionally I'll catch a video on YouTube. I'll sit back and watch, you know, and, uh, but, uh, it just mystifies me how, you know, how quick he is, you know, and, and, uh, like Zorro. <laughs> and there's no way, even if I did decide I want to try to paint like him, there's no way that I could keep up, you know. Which leads us to our funny video from Mikey, uh, Jerry. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. We had <laughs> had uh, presented that before, I think about a year ago. We watched it, but I thought it was a, it really appropriate for our Bob Ross discussion. <laughs> he is so funny. I swear he's funny. <laughs> you have got to watch this. You will guarantee you will bust out. <laughs> Mikey trying to paint like Bob Ross. <laughs> He ran into problems where the, what was it? No Prussian blue. No Prussian blue. <laughs> and he's just, and he's cleaning the paint. He does it and cleans the paintbrush off and goes after another paintbrush before Mike even realizes what he's done. Yeah. It was funny. I mean, if anybody's ever tried to follow a teacher on a, a video and watch them and paint along with them, it's exactly what you experience when you're trying to do that. <laughs> Our, with our, our, yeah, both of us were enrolled in Kelly Folsom's, you know. I have to stop hers all the time while I'm painting with her. 30 minutes long and mm-hmm. her vital art, you know, art life sessions. And she says, you know, she doesn't expect us to paint with her. She says, you're welcome to try, but she knows that no one can keep up with her. <laughs> well, she knows that what she's going to do next and you don't. I mean, you're just trying to, to follow along with her and learn, so. Oh yeah, and I used to, I, and that's like if I was, yeah, you know, if I was seriously going to try paint like Bob Russ, I would watch the video completely, and and take notes of the colors that he uses, you know, and everything. that's what I do with Kelly. You see, I watch Kelly's videos, and then I've got a notepad, and I I write down the the color mixing that she uses, you know, so that, and then even that's hard, because then when I sit down and try to do it, I I can't hardly read my own handwriting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watch it once and then I do it over again and then I paint along with her, but I have to pause it a lot, you know, to because I get befuddled in a certain area and go, whoop, that's not working. So, yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, uh, Bob Ross's approach. What really, really, um, as as a personal uh, uh, achievement for me. If I could get one of my paintings in the collection of the Smithsonian, 
I don't care if I ever sell another painting. If the Smithsonian would 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 uh, accept some of my paintings in their collection, I'm in good company. I'm with Bob Ross and several <laughs> other, you know, because that's American paintings. Yeah, that's history. That is, you know, they're the epitome of history. You know, you know, America. Well, you kind of always hope that your paintings are not going to get painted over by some other artist or yeah. or thrown in the dumpsters or whatever. But you know. I mean, we all aspire to hope that our paintings after we're gone live on in somebody else's house or something, you know? Yep, exactly. Well, I know I've got several collectors that's, uh, you know, at least they're going to hang on to them. And, uh, and of course my two daughters, like I was telling before recorded, I, I shipped, uh, about 39 pieces of artwork to my uh, oldest daughter over in Italy. And, um, then I was communicating with her. I said, you know, I, I, I miss my paintings. I'm kind of lonely. You know, they were my companions. Can you send some back? And her reply was no, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've lost them. They're gone. They're in her hands, but I know she's going to take good care of them. You know, <laughs> she's supposed to try to sell some of them, but that might happen. And that might not. I doubt that happens. <laughs> <laughs> really? <you know? laughs> oh gosh. It was interesting the the he didn't in his entire career he he didn't um try to uh, appease the critics the art critics he just completely ignored you know and people told yeah him, that's that's true i mean that just shows you you know that he was not out to do that at all he was out to to teach people how to paint he he had a gut belief a heartfelt belief that anybody can learn to paint. Regardless if you had talent or not, he says, don't worry about that. He says, and if you want to paint, if you love painting, do it. And that's just, that's just. I, said, I can't draw a straight line. You don't need to draw a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was really important that he didn't, he wasn't trying to sell his artwork. He was, you know, to make a living. He was, he was um, selling his art supplies to make a living. Right. But he wasn't really concerned with trying to sell the paintings, and that's that's completely like opposite of what most painters, you know, most artists are trying to do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a different way of looking at things, I guess. Really different. But, um, the, uh, a, a focus a hundred percent on the viewer. I mean, that's mm -hmm. you know, that's the only way to no other way to put it. And the thing the about Weber, the Weber company who took up making his paint his uh, oil paints. It's a very good company, and uh, they is it no Golden took over this other. I don't know if it was Golden or Weber took over this other guy that was from New York that I found discovered his his paints uh, while I was uh, upstate New York one time. Uh, I like to use his paint, but it's really really it's very pigment concentrated and it's hard to even get it out of the tube sometimes. So, I mean, it's just. It's, I think the same company is making that paint as Weber, the company that's making Bob Ross's paint, but he had to make it a circuit to a certain viscosity so that it was, you know, would do what he wanted to do when he was painting. Yep. Speaking of uh, heavily pigmented paints, you know, I, I, uh, I ordered, I've got some paints uh, manufactured by uh, Blit. Well, the company Utrecht out of new york but blick bought the company they've been mm -hmm. around like 1959 or something like that oh my god those things are so highly pigmented they have so <laughs> pigment in them and the the, the viscosity if i say a word they're not it's not real thick but it had they're kind of creamy you know which is what i like i like but i was working on one of the uh, kelly folsom's you know lessons this last week and uh she re required you mix a little bit of the uh, light uh, lemon lemon light with uh, the with the white, and I put a dab on like what the other brands that I've used two two lemon yellow. <laughs> it wasn't as light because <laughs> it was it, yeah. Because if you've been using student paints instead of professional oil paints, when you get professional oil paints, it's a totally different different thing and then the crements or zinc white that she likes to paint with is not as heavy as titanium white so yeah. it doesn't 
if you put a little bit of color in with that white, it goes that color really fast. I'm not paid anything, folks, but hey, if you go to, uh, you know, Dick Blick Art Supplies and you order their Utrecht uh, oil colors, believe me, they have a wide variety of colors and uh, they are outstanding. I mean, just a just a joy to paint with. So I'm always been an M. Graham fan. Yes, I still am. But uh, my second choice is Utrecht. Utrex is, uh, I've got quite a bit of those. Actually, uh, I was wanting, the reason why I ordered them was um, for Kelly's class. She has certain Pacific colors that M. Graham didn't make. But you, yeah. so all the colors for Kelly's class, I've, they're Utrecht brands, yeah, that I use. Because uh, her, uh, what, Chanel, whatever. Sennelier? Sennelier, way too expensive for me. I'm sorry. I'm just. <laughs> well. I'm, they shop with what you can afford to paint with that's 15 dollar you know tubes of paint <laughs> I mean, I, you know and uh the utrecht were in the same price range as the m gram six nine ten you know eight ten dollars so i think that's you know from from my yeah it was you know, like your cad lemon the cad lemon yellow yeah it's so concentrated you don't have to use much of it i mean you'll get used to you know, the CAD colors, and they last a long time. I have tubes of paint for that are CADs from, I don't know, that I've had for 20-something years, and they still are good, you know. This is so. a friend's podcast. I think I had to bring, I had to bring that up, <laughs> you know, to you, too. And uh, when you mentioned, you know, Bob Ross's paint, yeah, I've, I've never thought I would, you know, try any of his paints. I might. I don't, you know, just to see what everybody talks about, you know. But uh, uh, just the... Uh, the idea for our listeners, you know, I would really like to know who hasn't heard of Bob Ross in the United, if you live in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is everywhere to this day. His shows are still played on PBS. You know, they're all reruns. And of course he's all over YouTube and you know, his happy little, little, uh, trees. And by the way, I think I'm on to something. My last, uh, I've had, the, this is the fourth person that has commented on my botanical, my flower paintings, that they look like happy little flowers, like they're dancing. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to be the uh, the Bob Ross of happy little flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, <yeah. laughs> All right. We got any, any more comments about Bob Ross? No, I guess so. Got all <laughs> Oh, I think we pretty much covered it. <laughs> yeah. Before, go to again if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, talkartpodcast.com. There's the link for the uh, videos about Bob Ross, and uh, they're just enjoyable. And especially watch that uh, Jerry Arterama's uh, Mikey paints like Bob Ross. <laughs> that is a real hoot, guaranteed to put a smile on your face. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 93 for April the 19th, 2021. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and we've been talking about Bob Ross and uh, art materials and whatnot, and uh, Clyde being scared to do things. <laughs> I've been talking with Diane Johnson <laughs> Bronson. I'm going to say goodnight to Diane. Uh, Diane, say goodbye to everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yes, I'll second that as always. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a uh, star rating, a thumbs up, however you uh, listen to to the podcast, and feel free to send us some comments if you have a subject that uh, you would uh, like us to talk about. Until next time, bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop 
forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.